Welcome back to Gale Force Wins Season 4. The Gale Force Winds podcast is proudly sponsored by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. The NLCA provides unparalleled opportunities for its members through industry education, construction information, government advocacy, and networking events. The NLCA is building Newfoundland and Labrador. For more information, visit nlca.ca. Well, it is just fantastic to be back here on Gale Force Winds. I'm Alan Dale, and with me, as always, my two good friends from the East End of St. John's, Jerry Carew and Karen Hocko. Karen, great to have you on the show again as a co-host. Jerry, you want to give us a quick little weather update? I, I, I didn't think you were ever going to ask. Yes, uh, today is about 10 degrees. The snow is melting. Unfortunately, that means uh, any of the downhill skiers on this show may be a little disappointed in that. But uh, here in St. John's, we're excited about the melting snow, Alan. Snow is melting. That's great. And it's the 1st of July. We're recording this. That's great, Karen. It's so wonderful to have you back. Karen, uh, it, it's a real pleasure that you're joining us again. The last time you were on the show, I believe we were talking underwater robotics, and now we're talking wow. underground, but not necessarily uh, under the ocean. So it's great to have you back, Karen. Welcome. Good to be back. It's always an adventure to co-host with you guys. Julie, uh, bienvenue. Welcome to the show. And why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here as well. And I've watched some of your shows and uh, I see how positive it is. And we have a very positive project. So I think people will be excited to hear about it. So I'm Julie Lemieux, CEO of Triple Point Resources. We are, uh, I was here to develop the dome uh, as much as we can and find out uh, what is basically the value, what we can do with the dome. And I, I want to go back to my background, and and my background has been always a very curious uh, individual. But I was involved in ski racing a lot when I was uh, when I was a kid. So I was, uh, and and I push it through like the higher level of ski racing. So I'm used to uh, turn every stone to figure out how you can be better, how you can win. So that, that drive my career uh, always in everything I've done. And I'm, I'm very excited that uh, it, it's stayed with me. I think it opened a lot of door for me uh, over the years. And I moved from uh, one passion to the other. I was obviously very involved in ski racing. I had a big ski accident that uh, almost killed me when I was 16 years old. But then I, I had to decide where what I'm going to do <laughs> when I will grow up. And, and uh, I decided to uh, study in geomatics engineering because it, it's so uh, it, it varies from high-end math to legal. Um, and then it brought me close to uh, the mining industry with uh, the government of Quebec, but also with um, the, the Port of Quebec, uh, the Port of Rotterdam through my career. And now it seems that I came uh, a little bit full circle on what I've done. When I moved in Calgary, I started working for uh, the National uh, ski association. Uh, that was strange, but I was uh, I was doing a lot of strategic planning in my work, and I wanted to learn English because I was not speaking English that much, being a French Canadian. And I'm like, well, I know the subject, so what about I go, I go there and I help them revamp the entire ski racing system with the background that I have in in geomatics and strategic planning, and done that for three months. And after uh, coming back home in my engineering work, they, uh, they call me back and say, what about you come and, and see how you can help us implement that? And it's, it's such it's such a great subject for me. Couldn't resist, so I moved to Calgary for a year, and I've been here now for 20 years. And then from ski racing, I moved to uh, helping an engineering and uh, environmental consulting firm to to grow. I'm very passionate about when I say turning every stone to be better, to improve the process, to be faster at executing, and having. Uh, the, 
reconnecting to the purpose of each organization is something that's very, very important for me. So it, it, it brought me in so many directions, but every time people ask me to help them to figure out something that they don't understand, and that this is exactly what happened with uh, Triple Point. Uh, we're a spin out of Atlas Salt, and they wanted to maximize the value of uh, the dome asset. So they created a separate company, and I, was, I became a CEO. Wow, what a what a journey from ski racing to engineering, and uh, and here we are. So, uh, Julie, tell us a little bit about Triple Point. What exactly is that company? What what do they do? Yeah. So first, we uh, we we had this asset uh, called the Fischl Salt Dome, where it it's a it's a dome that's been discovered uh, way back, like more than twenty years ago. So people, some people in Newfoundland knew about the dome. Uh, I'm kind of happy that it was never developed for the oil and gas industry at that time. Uh, I know a lot of people were trying to find potash, find oil and gas, but usually salt dome, it's, it's used uh, everywhere in the world to uh, store inside uh, cavities that, that you create to store uh, hydrocarbon, natural gas. And it's something that it's uh, common Commonly used in in the oil and gas industry, on the midstream, and it like we discover uh, the characteristic of it. We knew there was a dome there, and for me, uh, when I started as a CEO, it was important to understand what we have. You cannot. Uh, go without knowing what kind of assets you have and, and what's the possibilities. And very quickly, uh, and it's definitely not my background, I don't have a background knowing what salt caverns are, um, but I've discovered all that and then I'm like, holy crap, this is, this is big, this is huge. And this, uh, at the same time, you have the wind farms that are popping all around the island. We can, we can use this dome to really um, increase the potential for all the wind farm project that we have on the island, but also for compressed air, things that I've all discovered at one point. So we're, we're really there to help others to do more, to export more, to be able to uh, maximize their investment. Uh, those wind farm like GH2, they will spend billions of dollars to, um, to maximize uh, their, their project. At one point, they will need extra storage. Having a salt cavern like just 30 kilometers away is fantastic. So it is uh, amazing that on the island, we have the largest salt dome on all the eastern seaboard of North America. And basically that's what we want to do. We want to enable people to do more and help them with uh, with their project and make sure we match the ambition that there is in Newfoundland and Labrador with wind developer. But yeah, there, there's so much we can do with, uh, with a dome. Now, most people of course would have no idea that this exists. Uh, so where is it physically located and how did you guys come across finding this? Yeah. So like I said, it was it was something that uh, it was known uh, that it was there was a dome there. People have, have been driving on top of it. It's right under the Trans-Canada Highway, uh, 30 kilometers south of Stephenville, where um, there's a lot of uh, potential there. And like I said, it's been discovered a long time ago and, and now we are ready to move forward uh, with uh, future development. The, the asset itself, uh, obviously it's been there for a very long time, billions of years, but basically what it is, is th there is a lot of salt in, in the region and the salt have been compressed and move up. So it's a little bit, if you take a pillow and you compress it, and then it will create a bump in into your pillow. That basically, geologically, that's what happened with uh, the dome. And now you have like very, very dense salt that can, uh, if you start creating those caverns, it's the perfect salt is 
the salt you want to store hydrogen, but also um, other like like we want to do compress air as well. So it's it's something that has been there for a long time. Uh, geologists have known known it for a while, and now it's the right time. It's the prime time to really develop it with everything that's happening in in uh, the province. So Julia, I wouldn't mind just would you mind? I, I wouldn't mind dovetailing off that a little bit. Talk about what this means for the province. So I come from oil and gas traditionally, and you don't hear a lot about salt domes in the, the offshore oil and gas industry in Newfoundland. We tend to we tend to ship right to market, but in other jurisdictions around the world, we know that salt domes are commonly used for various types of storage of petroleum products or some type of energy source. What does this mean for Newfoundland today? Well, to, to have this asset, it's the best gift that we can have uh, for Newfoundland and Labrador. When we travel around the world and we say to people that there is a salt dome in Newfoundland, first, they can't believe it. Uh, and they are so impressed. And now they're zooming in. They start thinking about how this can be part of the ecosystem that we have for the hydrogen sector and the clean energy. So the the importance of it will, will be discovered over time, but at the same time, people from the oil and gas industry totally know the value of it. There is a thousand cavern in uh, the Gulf Coast. Most of them are close to uh, the ocean, but some of them are very far away. If you have one, you use it. There is one in uh, Utah at it's called the ACES Delta Project. It's going to be the first commercial scale um, hydrogen storage and compressed air in the United States. All the other hubs that you see developing around the world, most of them, they need large scale storage. So they will use uh, salt cavern. There is salt cavern in Canada. There's some in Alberta and Saskatchewan. There's some in, in Nova Scotia. But a dome itself, when I, I was talking about how compressed it is and how the, the salt is dense, that is the uniqueness of what we have. So the type of cavern we can build in Alberta is very, very different than the one we can build here. So having an asset like this and opening up um, the eyes of potential off takers or potential user in, in the future, they know that at one point, this economy, this hydrogen economy that we need to decarbonize the planet will need the dome to be developed. And that's one of the most important thing for us. I want to be sure that first we picked the right approach to develop the dome. I know how uh, scary it can be for, for some people to have big project coming in their region. So we want to do it right. We want to engage early. And um, having this unique geological structure will really bring Newfoundland uh, and Labrador on the map to become a major export hub. Um, for sure, like the project that are going on demand right now, that's where the market is. But at one point, it will be very similar to the oil and gas. We believe um, you will have at one point tanks uh, to refill your, your car or refill long term or long uh, distance uh, industry, like the train, the plane, the, the vessels, they will all need to refuel at one point and they will need a large quantity of hydrogen. So it will become essential in the system to keep it on the ground like we do with uh, the oil and gas. And for, uh, for Newfoundland and for Canada, I would say, we get the attention now having a dome. People understand the value of uh, the asset. And we want to make sure that people in Newfoundland and Labrador understand the uniqueness of uh, the opportunity that we have. Julie, um, let me uh, go back just a little bit and so I can better understand. So this was a naturally formed dome in Newfoundland. Good luck for us. A naturally formed dome in Newfoundland. And basically we can take 
hydrogen that's produced from uh, green energy and then store it in there. Why is salt so good for storing energy like this? What, why is, what, mm -hmm. explain the chemistry a little bit there for me. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can explain that much the chemistry, but what I can say is when you build those cavern in very, very tight salt, so you use water, we plan to use uh, ocean water to, to to do it. So you inject water on the ground and slowly you form a, a silo, a cavern. So that, that water that we'll use will seal the salt. It's a little bit like, a, I don't know if you have a lava lamp at home, but if you do, spray some water on it and you will see like all the imperfection, all the cracks will disappear. Like that's the beauty of the salt. It's it, it move and it heals itself. So it's been used since the 60s to store hydrocarbon. Um, the U.S. National Reserve is there. And now, slowly, people are starting to use it for hydrogen as well. The first hydrogen cavern were in the early 70s. So it's not something that is new. It's, it's part of the value chain of renewable. We are the most stable known aspect of it. So yeah, so once you have that cavity done, um, there, there's a lot of safety that needs to be had to make sure that nothing's come out. But basically, uh, the dome itself is pretty much five kilometers long by 4.5 kilometers wide, and it goes deeper than two kilometers deep. And then we'll create cavern way inside that salt structure. It's not going to be close to the surface. Um, the dome at Fischl start between 400 and 500 meter below the surface. And then the cavern will be there. And some of the cavern can be 80 meters by 500 meters uh, or more. Like we can go to a kilometer long cavern, very, very skinny uh, to compress the hydrogen. And, and it's really like a cavity that it seals itself. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of uh, research that have been done on salt cavern for hydrogen. And it is the best way to store long term. Like if you know about renewable, you know how complicated it is to harness the energy when the wind is too hard, the wind is not there that day. Um, there's a lot of uh, irregularities with any renewable. So you want to store as long as you can to be able to manage um, the the volume that, that you can play with. So one cavern is pretty much the equivalent of, depending on the size we build, 400, 500, 700 spherical tank that you will see at uh, any location. Like it's the typical one you see in the oil and gas. This is massive and this is one cavern. We can build more than 30 of those cavern over time. And one cavern right now would be sufficient to store pretty much all the energy that would be created by um, the wind the wind farm producer if they were to use it uh, uh, right away. So this is major, it's right on the Trans-Canada Highway, close to the power line, and we can build those massive cavern over time. So it's really a generational asset that will be developed for more than 100 years, I believe. So Julie, you mentioned about the renewable industry, and I'm really curious. So you're talking about energy storage, which is starting to become such a big deal when it comes to the hydrogen economy and an integral part of it. And then you're talking about building a hub potentially that can actually access global markets from the west coast of Newfoundland around the dome, which we're seeing in other places. But you've also mentioned compressed air. And so those of us that work in the renewable space are seeing compressed air being used more and more now as another source of clean electricity generation. Could you talk a little bit about how a dome plays into that and what that can mean to Newfoundland? And you know, a, a province that's a little energy scarce these days as a result of just limitations on the grid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it it struck me last year when I was when I was at Energy NL and I listened to Jennifer Williams' presentation, and she was like, "Please, if you do have a project that can bring me more power, I need it because Newfoundland and Labrador need to double, more than double, their capacity in the 10, 15, 20 years to come." And I'm like, "Well, 
like there's project around the world that have used salt cavern and have done use a technology called case it's a compressed air so you, basically it's it's really what it is you create a big cavity on the ground and you compress the air that is inside and when you release the air it spins a turbine like you will see in a, a dam as an example the water will funnel through uh, the system and will spin a turbine so it's a little bit the same but it will generate power and you can imagine with the very large cavity you can have on the ground it's like a big let's say a big balloon that you have for a birthday party and then you let the air out with one little hole and you spin uh, the turbine so we can build caverns that are big enough and there's technology available through multiple vendor to do that compress air so we're like well maybe we should start with this maybe we should start powering up and helping the grid to be a little bit more stable so everybody will have um I don't know if it's life easier because it's complex project, but at least we we can help there. And those projects have been, you know, going strong for more than thirty years. There's a big one in the in the United States in Alabama. There's one in Germany. You can see them popping up um, in Australia, in California. There's a big one now in uh, coming up in, in Alberta, Marguerite Lake. So we've been following those projects and we're like, well, we have first the largest salt dome, uh, not just on the Eastern seaboard of Canada, but in Canada. And so what about we look into it? So we're working on this project right now and we believe to help with the power, it's something that will help everybody else. And it's that's where we're there. And like I said to you, everybody, like the dome will not move. The dome will be there. Uh, we cannot move it somewhere else. Uh, so we need to maximize as much as we can, uh, what we can do. We believe compressors, great technology, uh, well-known, um, and we're confident we can offer Jennifer Williams with a, a project that is meaningful and that is fast. We can develop it for a fraction of the cost and um, a lot faster so we can be there before uh, 2030 if everything goes well and, all the when, and when you say she gets in place <laughs> when you say jennifer williams you mean the ceo of newfoundland hydro for those that may not yeah. be familiar <laughs> sorry with jennifer, she, she is now so common almost to me but the CEO <laughs> of newfoundland hydro is very, very important for us to come up at least to uh, provide a, another uh, project that uh, they can look at and see if it's something that is meaningful. We, we know it is for um, many places around the world, so we believe it will be very meaningful for Newfoundland and Labrador as well. So, so Julie, I'm, I, what I'm understanding here is almost it's two very separate and distinct things utilizing the asset they have. You have caverns where you can store uh, hydrogen and you have uh, almost like another cavern where you can create pressurized air to spin a turbine to create electricity. Is that correct? There's two and two different things yep. that we're looking at? Yeah, uh, definitely. That's that's this, this dome I've never been developed before and we can decide basically to keep it clean and green as much as we can. There's a lot of other dome around the world where they, they have natural gas in one cavern and they have compressor in another one and they have hydrogen in another one, all within one dome. Right. Um, for us, we want to keep it uh, clean and green. We believe that the first step will be compressor because the need is there. It's very clear that without more power, um, it's hard to match the ambition that Newfoundland and Labrador have. They want to have, I think they want to have these projects coming online, but you need to be able to power them. So for us, like it's, it's for peak power. So when the grid needs a little boost, we can be there for the grid. Julie, when you uh, involve, uh, when a company involves themselves in a big project like this, of course, uh, the local community is curious need to be engaged tell me about triple points vision on engaging the local community yeah so for me it's the the first thing that i've done when i became ceo it is uh, something that is very close to my heart when i when i worked uh, on 
oil and gas project on the environmental side. I've seen I've seen projects that have done very well, and and I think they they were very sensitive to uh, the local communities. And I've seen other projects that were not that much. So I've I've formed my idea of how to interact with people that will will be there and. Um, create opportunities for them, but also create some uncertainties. It's it's a big change. And uh, for me, it was very important to be there on the ground, speak with people, start talking to them about the potential of the dome uh, and what we can do. And I was learning at the same time as them about what we can do with the dome and Salt Cavern. And I want them to feel comfortable. I want to gain their trust. And we want to have a project that is uh, meaningful for Newfoundland and Labrador, but really meaningful for the local people. Uh, this dome will be developed for generations to come. So it's career that will be created there. And I want to be, I'm not shy to be in front of people and, and ask um, um, what are their what are their view of having a project like this coming? And what kind of challenges they see, what kind of fear they have, and answer them. Like I I want to be um able to touch every group that is the region, uh, like the uh, indigenous community. We spoke with uh, so many people. We receive already letter of support. We're close to the Chamber of Commerce, the mayor, the local bands, the Halipu Nation, um, different group uh, that have interest in the, the region. And I know people are uh, very close to their water, as an example. It's something that we we knew from the start. Um, and it's something that we take very seriously. So we want to minimize the impact that we have on local water. That's why we plan to use uh, water coming from the ocean to solution mine the cavern, but also, um, yeah, like it will, uh, I think it's a great opportunity uh, and we want to do it well. So for me, it's, it's being there um, and gaining the, the trust and confidence that they can call me anytime. They can call our team anytime to ask any question about uh, what's coming up. The beauty of uh, developing Cavern like this, I think the minimal impact that 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 we have it's a very small footprint developing a, a cavern or multiple cavern even if we develop them all um it it's it makes a big difference uh like we were saying it can be a 600 spherical tank that you don't need above ground um so that's pretty much if we were to put them side by side it would be the distance between stevenville all the way to the dome you don't want to see that but you will see a little wellhead on surface in a massive cavern on the ground that is very secure. Um, so we will be able to uh, expand over time with demand. And I think that's that's the magic for uh, developing the dome. And so then one would think that you, your safety is paramount in terms of how you will build the dome. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I'm sure at the community level, they want certainty that the management of the dome has the best practices when it comes to the health and safety of a community. Yeah. So so that, that is something that was very uh definitely top of mind as soon as we start talking about developing cavern. Um, and it's normal that people will have uh, these, these questions. And, and it's, it's kind of weird to think that it can be uh, underground, um, but also very safe. Um, and we've hired, I think, the best company that can work with us. We are very close to um, uh, any group that talk about safety for cavern. Canada is a leader in uh, putting rules and regulation for salt cavern. The, the individual that is chairman of that committee here in Canada is working with us. 
um, and he will come in Newfoundland and Labrador and talk about the safety. There's very, I think people don't know too much about Salt Cavern because there's very little incident that happened around the world. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, not happening, but they've learned over time. Like it's been in operation for 60 years. So it's been fine tuned on the safety side. Um, Quite a bit. So we're very confident that the way we're going to develop it in in at Fischl will be to the highest standard. And now you have the European, the German, the American, and Canada that is the, developing a lot of caverns around the world specifically for hydrogen. There's a lot more research specifically for um, the, the clean energy industry that is bubbling right now. And we stay at the forefront of that. Um, and it's it's something that's obviously very, very close to us. Um, there's a lot of rules and regulation we'll need to um, rely on to make sure we build to the top standard around the world. And, and yeah, we believe in Canada, we, we have that. And um, what's going to happen in Newfoundland and Labrador will definitely use the best practice from everywhere around the world and will not shy away on uh, safety. Julie, it must be uh, for the other industry partners that are in the conversation, those that are going to create the hydrogen, it must be music to their ears to hear that there's somebody talking about a storage solution for them. So there, there must be an incredible uh, collaboration right now happening across the board in this field yeah well the company was just created a year ago so there there is some players that were not even aware that there was a dome some others knew about the dome and they have to go through there's so much uh risk in every project there's so much work to do for gh2 they've advanced their project a lot um uh, to make sure that they will start exporting. The quantity, uh, the volume they can export at, at the beginning of their project is maybe not there to bring a salt cavern in the portrait at this time, but definitely over time, any wind project, and, and who knows, maybe we're gonna have a second round of crown land that will come. Uh, and I'm sure there's more and more eyes uh, that are looking to use uh, the salt dome. So we want, for us, we want to create collaboration. We want to make sure that everybody in the value chain um, have a say on how we can help each other to maximize every project that we have. Every bit in the value chain is important. Like the off taker, what do they need to be convinced um, to sign an offtake with a GH2 as an example. For sure, it brings some relief to know and confidence um, if you can say, hey, I do have a salt cavern that will help my organization to always be on my commitment with you. If I ship once a month to you, I can guarantee that if the wind blows too much or too little, or I need to do maintenance for an extended period of time, I can still do it because I have my reserve there. I have my stockpile and you can store it for months. So you can accumulate inside a salt cavern and use it later. Very different than batteries than that. What I know about batteries, it, it can be depleted after a few hours, a few days, and then it's over. So what you're gonna do if there's no win for a week or two, or you need to do maintenance on your system, you will use your reserve. So that brings a lot of certainty, like the off-taker that we spoke to you, they, they were stunned to hear that there was a dome, but then they're like, okay, now that helps me to make my own business decision on really investing in hydrogen. If you're a large company that needs to invest billions of dollars to adjust your operation to bring hydrogen into your system, you need to be sure that the volume you need will come when you need it. You cannot stop the operation for a while. It's it's like the fueling system that we have right now. Um, 
I know you go to the gas station, there's always, pretty much always fuel in the tank there to refuel yourself. So those big companies, they will need to, to have a security on the stockpile somewhere. Like we spoke with people in Quebec, we spoke with people on the Eastern seaboard of uh, the US as well. And now they start thinking about, okay, how now we can make it happen. And it's a long game, it's not a sprint. Um, the hydrogen is coming. It's mandated by so many government, it mm -hmm. will happen and official will play a role at one point. And we want to be ready for that. And, and yeah, it's all in Newfoundland and Labrador. It's magic. I, I can't, uh, you know, I was at the Energy NL conference last year and one of the themes of the conference was around opportunity. So much, and the way you describe this is yet another opportunity, another opportunity for people to bring families back home to work in Newfoundland and Labrador. But I also see an opportunity in the creation of skill sets here that we've not even realized yet. So new academic programs that can come online to support this type of industry. It's just opportunities every direction you look it must be exciting to be in the middle of that at the moment it, it's i think it's more than exciting like every morning i'm like wow there's a lot of work in front of us but it's 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 amazing um i met two individuals they've been introduced to me here in calgary that were with suncor for many many years uh, Bill Bass and, and Daryl Donnie. They were um, on the corporate side of uh, Suncor. And when they heard that there was a salt dome in Newfoundland, they're both from Newfoundland. And they wanted to meet with me right away. And they are retiring. And I'm like, well, you should retire and you should do something else. No, I need to be part of this because this is so unique. And I want Newfoundland and Labrador to to do it right, and I have the skill set that you need to make it right. So they all come with an unbelievable background from the oil and gas sector, and they want to be part of this. Sometimes they say, I would have sweeped the floor to be part of this team. I just want to be there. And now we're like here in Alberta, but also when I'm on the plane going to Deer Lake, there's a lot of oil and gas people that are there. And when I give them my card, give them, you know, like a, a little pamphlet about uh, the official. And I say, well, if you know people that are from, you know, from Alberta or anywhere else that are uh, moving back and forth between Newfoundland and uh, Alberta and, and they're done, but they have expertise in Salt Cavern, ask them to give me a call. Yeah, if it's your brother, sister, uncle, cousins, uh, there is a lot of Newfoundland and Labradorian here in Alberta that I know they want to go back home. This is a great project to go back home for. It's fantastic and it's very unique. And it's, um, yeah, it's going to be there for a generation. We want to make it right with the right people. And, and we're very, very lucky to have now. It's more to find the right fit to, to work with with me and with the rest of the team, we want people that have very similar value. We're very concerned about the environment, very concerned about uh, people wanting to go back home, but also to do it right, to do it right environmentally, to engage properly, consult properly. And I know some people were telling me, well, um, you know, on the consultation, you, you just have like two bucks to check I don't want to hear about that. I want to go further. I want to make it better. I want to be in the community that we will be in with this project and, and make sure they understand everything about it. So having people from Newfoundland and Labrador that want to go back home and want to be part of this, like for me, it's even better, even better. Uh, and with the expertise they have, um, it's incredible. Like, uh, they come for um, a great project more than anything else. So you need to get the story out because it's very exciting what's happening around the dome. People need to understand what the opportunities are. And I know this year you're going to speak at the Energy NL conference, which is great. So that helps raise awareness around this. So what does 2024 look like for Triple Point Resources? Like what's on the horizon for you as you, you know, accelerate and hopefully look at uh, future development around the dome? 
Yeah. So what's coming up for us is uh, there's one activity that's very, very important. So we'll, we're going to do um, a new uh, drilling program at the dome to have samples that will help us understand the compressibility. Um, the We're, we're going to analyze that core and it's a big rig that will come. We're going to have a four inch core that is essential if you want to respect the rules and regulation to build cavern, you need to do that type of drilling to start with. Then we're going to send instrument down the hole to make, basically, I call it the X-ray of the dome. So we'll know if there's shear place and purity somewhere. So when it's going to be time to really position the first cavern, we'll have a better idea with that the X-ray. This is very expensive. Like uh, the company is still small, so we'll need to definitely raise money, find partners. And there is, uh, on the partner side, there is so much interest. Like there's majors that really want to be part of this. And for us, we're really looking at the fit. Is it a good fit? Does this big company have the same value that we have? And do they understand that going in a small community, um, the impact we can have, we need to do it right. So we can kind of almost pick and choose who we want to partner with on this. So this is very exciting for us. So finding the right partner, doing that geotech hole, it's, it's something that uh, we hope to do in, in June now and then we'll have some uh, analysis that's going to be done for six to eight months in the meantime we continue to engage and consult with the local community and we can talk more about what it can look like um, what are the challenges we can face and talk about it and find solution together i think there's a lot of interest mm -hmm. that is something that is very very important to us so that geotech hole advancing the environmental and advancing the, the company to find the, the right partner. And we'll need to, if if we decide to move ahead with the development of the dome, we want to make sure um, that we'll be able to, to finance the project. And right now it's the same thing on the investor side. Um, if you look at, as an example, ASUS Delta in Utah, it's been financed by the uh, Alberta Pension Fund, Manulife, the Ontario Pension Fund, and another company from the US. So in Canada, there's already a lot of interest and we have a lot of connection in Europe. And they, they first, they can believe that they have a chance to be part of um, a development of a dome. Uh, and, and they understand the long-term value. Like the, the people that know, really know about mm -hmm. uh, what you can do with a dome and they want to be part of it. And it's the same thing. Who are the best financial partner that we want to have involved? Um, there is a lot of grant coming from the government. It's, it's sometimes hard to navigate all of this. So we're going to have... Um, maybe access to some grant. We want to maximize uh, this aspect. So all that uh, is happening and we're creating a lot of awareness on the international level. I would say last year it was overwhelming. Um, now we want to focus more on Newfoundland and Labrador, Atlantic Canada, and, and make sure people understand what we can do with it. Definitely the uh, project with compressed air for um, Newfoundland Hydro is something that it, that we want to advance and we believe it's a natural first step for us. So we will advance that and the team's going to grow and we hope to uh, recruit um, as many uh, people from Newfoundland as, as possible. We've engaged already with uh, some local company. We want them to grow. We want them to uh, take this opportunity, unique opportunity. Nobody has expertise in salt cavern. Uh, we understand that, but we can mix them with people that do. Um, and then they can, we can bring the expertise uh, in, in Newfoundland and make sure they are going to be the one that will help us over the lifetime of this asset. 
this, this sounds absolutely amazing. Oh, I mean, uh, you know, many people in the province of Newfoundland would have driven over top of this on their way to the ferry and, and never quite realized the potential of what was happening around them. You, you keep mentioning the one in Utah, and I know that that's a very successful project. What is the scale of that compared to the scale of what you're talking about? It How different are they? Well, they are, they are definitely very different. So they have a dome that is very similar in size to uh, the one at Fischl. It's been developed with a different partner, one of them being Mitsubishi Power Americas. And now Chevron is uh, back in. So originally they started developing cavern for natural gas to decarbonize an industry that was just uh, beside. And slowly they will start injecting more and more hydrogen into the system and they will reduce the consumption of natural gas over time. Right now, their uh, green project, uh, they're building, I think a total of four cavern, two are in construction right now, and they will be the largest um, project that is not a pilot project or a demonstration project. It will be a full scale, industrial scale, uh, project to store excess hydrogen on the ground. And they want to continue to uh, power system that are there. There's LA that is far away, but there's a power line that's going through. They, they have a lot going on. So for us, we are at the infancy of it. We don't have a first cavern yet, but we hope to, to create the first one for a compressor and slowly, or maybe even at the same time, we believe that if you build it, people will come and there's an enough storage there for really for generation before we move to our second dome that we have that is not too far away. Um, those those cavern like are really massive. Uh, if if we built one every year for the next 30 years, each cavern can be the caverns that are 70 years old right now are still going strong. So you can imagine when I say generational, it's really <laughs> for a long, long time. Um, so we can develop this asset, the official main salt dome for the next 30 years. And we don't know if the demand for hydrogen will be there, but we need to create that awareness around the world so people can start thinking, okay, official will will fix my problem because they can ship from there. And, and you know, even better than me, how best located it is right at the entrance of the St. Lawrence River, ready to go to Europe, ready to go in the Northeast US. It's it's massive. And something that I didn't talk about is all the salt that will come out of the dome is very high end salt. We need to do something with it. We're gonna use ocean water to solution mine the project. Then we'll have like enormous amount of salt that is very high end. Do we want to create a, a new business on the island to use it? Um, is it viable? All this will need to be uh, discussed uh, and, and find the right partner or the right company who wants to set up shop in, in Newfoundland to use that salt, like that very high end salt can go for a lot of money. So we will we'll stockpile it for a while if we have to, but it's it's massive. Julie. When you think no. about Aces Delta, oh, sorry. Yeah, I just want to ask one question. Has anyone put a value on this entire project? It's it's just astounding. It's the most interested I've ever been in a cavern and salt, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but right now we're still developing, uh, you know, we went from the conceptual design or kind of pre-feasibility. We know we have a ballpark of how much money we will need. We believe close to half a billion dollar to develop a few cavern and the entire setup. And then each cavern, once, once you have um, the, the, the footprint, like the, the operation uh, ongoing to build another cavern, is a lot less money, obviously. And, and then we'll move through time with this. So let's say for half a billion dollar, uh, maybe you can build uh, compressed air and storage uh, right away for uh, the future. And it's not, you know, it's not gonna happen quickly. Just to solution mine one cavern, it, it can take up to two, two years just to do injecting the water inside one cavity. So this is a long term, like it's a long, long game. Um, 
so it's yeah it, it it is definitely something that for the cost of it and and how quick we can be operational i think it it can have effect very quickly on um the grid uh, to start with and other producer wants to come online and if ever they need extra storage or they want to you know fill up a cavern to start with to secure their offtake um it's going to be there for them. When you look at the dome and the size, and then you look at where it's located along, you know, the uh, along, you know, international seaways, and also your by a highway system, because you know that the 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 grid is right along the dome. Is it feasible that Fishel Dome can be akin to an ACES Delta project? Do you do you mm -hmm. see that that could be the model based on just the sameness of the domes and what they're doing in terms of hydrogen developments yeah. and the support? Well, the difference with, with them for sure is that they are in Utah, so they're not close to the ocean at all. But all the other do the other dome around the world, and, and if you look in, in, in France and in Germany, they want to develop two, three hundred caverns before 2030. So this is this is massive for us. Um, so for um, for the dome at Fischl to be able to have something as close as we can be pretty much to the ocean on the Trans-Canada Highway, close to uh, the seaways, it's, it's even more unique than Aces Delta and even more unique uh, than any cavern that you see in, um, in, in Europe. There's, we were speaking with uh, the Port of Rotterdam they have, you know, like they want to import, they want to receive a lot of material. They don't have salt cavern on site. They don't. So they will have some spherical tank, but who's going to feed them all the time? We can be there for them if they want to. So if we have enough producer who wants to fill up those cavern, we can guarantee to different port, Port of Amber, Port of Rotterdam, other port that are interested or for our own consumption on the island, we we can use this energy of the future. So there is there is so many options to make it a hub. Uh, we just need to pick one that will that will stick with the ambition of all the other player. And I think we need to come together with uh, people from the entire value chain, groups from the entire value chain. That's what we. We try to find. We try. We try to find the best uh, group to help us everywhere on the value chain to really make it work and make it maybe easier for a GH2 or other group that want to have those massive wind farm, but they need off taker. They need to make sure that the off taker can use their material. Like it's, it's uh, very in the infancy. And it's fun to be there that early, but it's a hurry up and wait game uh, every day for me. Truly, I mean, uh, I can't begin to describe how exciting all of this is. Strategically, as we talked about, it's an incredible, uh, it's an incredible place that you find yourself uh, where it's situated. You know, you've identified a challenge in an emerging industry in our province, and that is a long-term storage of their product. Uh, you're solving that challenge. You're focusing on the local community right out of the gate to make sure everybody is in the conversation. You're seeing the opportunities that exist, not only for people that have an existing skill set in oil and gas that's transferable, into this uh, into this industry, but the creation of new skill sets as we go along and, and, and to use your words in a generational project, it's really fascinating to see. And even already talking about co-products of what is produced alongside of this in high-end salt. I mean, all the pieces are coming together for Triple Point at the moment. What, what is that one thing that's the most exciting for you right now in the moment well, what's keeping you up at night what keeps me up at night you know what um what i do like the most in everything i do is is really to go back in 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 newfoundland not just for the the great fish and ship that i had <laughs> maybe a bit too much uh but it is to see how people are 
eager to have something happening. Uh, at the same time, they, they are amazed by the opportunity. It, it, and for me, I, I really like that. And I want, like, I want to win. You know, I say that from the start, I'm an ex ski racer. When I go into something is to win, to make it work. And I need the people to believe they can do it. Um, and that is the most exciting for me. That's something that I, I see in the eyes of every member of the team as well. And I think that's, that's very unique. Like uh, some people on the oil and gas, they've been, they've been crushed in the last years of the dirty oil or now to come in an environment where it's refreshing. Um, hydrogen have been selected by uh, so many countries to be the fuel of the future or part of the fuel of the future. 22% uh, of uh, the energy will need to be hydrogen by 2050, according to you know, people that have calculated how much uh, energy we need to switch from the fossil fuel. To be that early in, uh, in the clean energy is, is, is fun. So it, I want to keep it that way. There's challenges every day, but uh, everybody we have on the team, we're always looking for a solution. And to turn every stone, make sure we're going to win this race with um, the dome itself. The hydrogen economy is, is moving now, and we want to be part of it. Uh, we know that uh, the race itself is ongoing. So the faster we can be uh, online, the better, but we, we want to do it in a way that people are prepared for uh, what is coming. So that, that is for me is the, the most uh, interesting, but I said like from the investor to large uh, company that are interested by hydrogen or the salt or the fact that there's a dome there, like you can see their, their head spinning on the possibilities. And I want people in Newfoundland and Labrador to, to see that um, because it's a very unique. Well, I want to tell you, that's what opportunity looks like right there. That is <laughs> been a wonderful conversation. And thank you for opening our eyes to what existed in our province and many will not have really known about. Look at the potential of what that means for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, what that means for the moms and dads and the brothers and sisters that get to get their family to come back home. This is a win, win, win across the board. We appreciate you coming on Gale Force Winds. It's been an absolute pleasure to hear about Triple Point and the vision that you have for the future. Merci beaucoup, Julie. Yeah, th thank you for inviting me and hopefully we'll, we'll come, uh, come again. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.